Let your mind go free And it's too loud on the earth today So let's go home and lay down Rest here in my arm Now lay down Lay down The universe is on Madison Square Garden carries a lot of weight. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of history in that room. A lot of great musicians, a lot of great artists and bands have gone through there and played excellent shows. And you have to step up your game. You really do. Hello, hello. How's it going? Yeah. We hadn't rehearsed in like three or four months, really. We'd had a show or two, but it wasn't enough to go in and, and play all these big arenas that we were going to do for eight shows and then end at the garden without right. rehearsing and making sure we were, you know, cohesively a band. The chemistry between the five of us just has not changed. And it's all about the balance, you know, like in, in any friendship, any relationship. You have to know in your heart that what you're doing is right for you. And that's what keeps the vibe, is that we all trust each other, period. <laughs> so the first rehearsal, everything was set up to go. The crew had set everything up, sound checked, line checked. Everything was sounding good. We walk in and say, all right, let's practice. We all sat down in a circle for like two or three hours without touching any of our instruments and just talked about what we wanted to do at Madison Square Garden. Opening the show, all right, I'm going to just start with I really think that the intro to City On Down is... It's got order, it sounds great, it's got the yeah, yeah, yeahs, it's got a solo, it's got a long jam. That's my vote. Um, what, what was the first song on Anytime Now? Was we open it? City On Down. I think I like Chris's idea of opening up with Love and Memories because it's short, it's sweet, it's impactful, and then we move on with the rest of the set. I think, There's no build. I think the way we can do that is, is like, obviously, like, I'm up on the speakers at that point, over on the left, <laughs> you know? And, like, when the stage is, we can work that stage with the lighting and things, so it's black, and you can't, you wouldn't be able to tell what the hell's going on. Like, if everybody's pedals were on and things were set, you know what I mean? So you just walk out and you hit, yeah. you're gonna jump up and down, you're gonna have this thing going. Like, it's, it's good. I think it's a good way to start off the yeah. And I, I think right after that, yeah, but I wanna hear that. that, I wanna hear that, oh, they're coming on. You know what I mean? I wanna hear that. Cool. Here all I hear is a song star. We can open up eight shows with Love and Memories and see how it's going. We can, we can almost practice it every night, you know? I mean, it's not a bad idea. Yeah, but you know up. what? I don't... If we do that every night, I don't want the crowd to think that we're going to play Love and Memories first at MSG. Spot I mean, are we sold on opening with Love and Memories? Or are we saying that we're going to open with The Wanderer? Or are we going to open with... You know what I'm saying? Other songs. I, I just think I it's going to be like memories. quick. Okay, so, okay, so Love and Memories. Oh, wait. 
face floating Like a vapor smoke that I could never see through But here I am stuck inside of yesterday Just no good for me But you're sweet like a cupcake And I wanna eat you up You I Oh, I was way too good to you Oh, I gave you everything you needed Everything and more But you stabbed me in the back Left me bleeding on the floor I'm not saying I wanna forget you But damn it, I have tried And these memories are killing me And it's digging me inside And you leave me here bleeding Walk away Now you haunt me like a ghost Years later, come back It's time you left me It's time you let me be I'm just trying to take it all in, you know, so I don't forget when I'm 100 years old and I can look back and say we were here at Madison Square Garden. I got $10 on Richie, $10 on Richie. Never played this game on an Xbox 360. <laughs> <laughs> There should be a map. There should I know, be a thing. I know. It's really hard for the map. Our path was a long and winding one to get to the garden. It was, I mean, it started in high school. I mean, we, we've been a band for 10 or 11 years. We were a bunch of guys, and so we were friends, and we decided to start a band. And, you know, we've always kept that friendship in mind. We're living out our dreams here with our best friends. I mean, that's like, you know, an opportunity of a lifetime here. Ah, what the fuck? <laughs> You're right there. <laughs> what? You're Nothing. Disgusting. Oh, but well, what the hell am I doing? What's oh. going on? <laughs> Thank you.
Going, going on tour, I look forward to it, you know, it's just like, I guess summer camp, you know. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> don't, 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 Mark. <laughs> you know, like it's always been like us hanging out in the basement when we were practicing for the first, you know, the first time when our band got together. Chris, do something about this. You saw my boxer briefs? Extra small, <laughs> extra tight. <laughs> Victoria's Secret boxer briefs. <laughs> Not a shutout. All right, Michael, here, I gotta call my Baby, I just killed Richard. <laughs> it's, it's it's like a summer camp on wheels. I think I'm sure a lot of the other guys probably use that phrase too. It's summer camp. I mean, you're out there with a bunch of guys you've known for years, and they're all pals of yours, and just the ribbing happens. That's when you just start ripping on each other. We used to stay up late, party, not party, but we'd have like a couple beers, play some video games. Ben's just gonna get in the bunk because he's Mark. Mark! <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> camera on, bench comes in my face. <laughs> camera it's whore! It's not just anything wrong with that. It's a documentary, not a documentary. <laughs> Ben's just kind of like the little brother. The kid brother. <laughs> much needed fun. He is a little young, he didn't spend as much time in college, and that sometimes you know, comes through. Uh, uh, he's a year younger than us. He's not even that much younger. He's, he's mature. No, I'm not saying he's mature. I think he likes to have the most fun. This could get edited, right? <laughs> and he's always trying to express himself, whether it's through music or photography. Just now, that just happened. And Ben's just someone who, who has a lot of passion and a lot of zest for life. A guy that you can always count on, you know? He's my little brother. I can play the adjective for him if you want to, Sam. Adjectives? Oh, dude, you're killing me. Can I come back to this one, actually? <laughs> I'll start with Jerry. Jerry is robotic. <laughs> Sorry, Jerry. Jerry, honest, intense, loyal. Probably the most accomplished mu musically of the bunch. Most rounded musician. I just think he's a very gifted musician, you know, and that's why I would say talent. He plays guitar, bass, saxophone, drums, piano, flugelhorn he mastered in third grade. He's, you know, he's a hard worker. He's the one who kind of is the band liaison for most of the touring stuff. Good at managing a big picture. That's not an adjective. Chris Kulos. I don't know what to say about Chris. If you don't find something that you can like about Chris, uh, I, I, I don't know what the hell's wrong with you. He's the easygoing, good-natured one of the bunch. I would say he's the glue. Ah! Chris. Great. Rhythmic. Respectful. Really nice guy. Really nice guy. Definitely like a guy who loves having a great time. <laughs> and light. I don't know why, but like sunshine. He's very, very meticulous. Very meticulous in his work. He works his ass off, you know, constantly practicing and trying to become better at what he does. Richie, that's the monk. No, he's like a little Buddha. He's, uh, he's all zen. Stylish, super stylish. Rich is like the, uh, the James Dean. Get, get a picture of uh, Richie's uh, skin. <laughs> Clean? I don't know why clean comes to mind. <laughs> Richard is just somebody you can always count on. He's probably the most musically serious about the band. The funniest person that I've probably ever met. He's a really quick wit. He's a, he's a sharp, funny guy. Tonight was especially <laughs> a really good time. This is my friend Richard who's making fun of me no, most likely. This is a really great friend. Um, that's not an adjective. Mark, uh, what can I say about Mark? Oh, where do you even begin with that guy? Mark. The shark, the lead man. Mark's our leader. He's a natural born leader. He's the chief. He's the big cojona. You know, he's the front man. He's actually grown. It's been like a, a great to see him evolve into that position. He's the benevolent dictator. He's a great friend. Mark's a good guy. I like working with Mark a lot. Incredible lyricist and good singer, a great singer. The most talented person I've ever met. He's a very sharp mind, extremely creative mind. Passion, without a doubt, passion. These guys believe in what they do. There's a, uh, there's a prevailing uh, saying that they're nice guys, which is very true, but they're driven. They have a, uh, uh, a belief in what they're doing, and it's contagious. I mean, all of us here believe in what they're doing, and it's, it's fun, it's great to be around, and it's, it's just a good vibe. That's it, right? That's everyone?
be that concerned with Untitled being second? Or do you Honestly, definitely want to like, scratch that? Because that's pretty cool. With those done, I, don't, I mean, very unexpected. With that very done right there, I don't know. People all love it. Very know, unexpected. They like Black Rock more. Dude, like and then more. playing these two in a row, I mean, they would... That would be totally random, you know. But cool. But they would not expect Love Memories and then Untitled as the first two songs. Yeah. Deep to the heart, and right from the start, she talks softly over a glass of wine. Now and again, she's more than a bread. Why don't you just throw me a line? Well, it would be great. She did a gift just a minute for my precious time. Well, I give it a while, but that's not my style. How is that a cry? I'm walking when she was still talking And I'm looking for an exit sign Part in my face, but I'm leaving no trace Cause I really haven't got no more time I began thinking, and my heart is sinking And I'm looking for a place to go Well isn't it sad, she could treat you so bad You never really let her know Everyone say that she cried Forget the time I was trying And that was the day Told her I need more time I'm an A.O. Yeah. And I know, I know What it feels like to be alone I say now I know, I know What it feels like to be at home Say hello It's my life My life Why can't we take this slow Why can't you take it slow Go on, it's a low huh? You're not going to make me do it today? Yeah. So, this is what happens This is what we do Nice <laughs> Again Nice. It's actually ashing your cigar every time you do that. Dunk. All right. Dunk. Tomahawks. Oh. <laughs> it gets unusual to be in a business partnership with friends. Uh, but, you know, everything we do, I mean, our, our manager is my brother. Cool. My first thing for you guys, I ran the business off the pager, man. We had a 1-800 number. Yeah, I was OAR existed on a pager. Years ago, we sort of coerced Mark's older brother David. He was sort of given the position whether he wanted it or not. So till this day, he's still their personal manager and does a great job. We have a touring keyboardist named Michael Paris now, and it's great because he's extremely, Michael is extremely talented. And a sick player, great singer, plays so many instruments. He was in Stomp for like six years on Broadway, so he's toured the world, he's seen so many things. But when he walked in the room, he didn't say any of that. He didn't say, I've seen the world. He didn't say, I've played for such and such years. I'm a badass. He's like, you know, I love what you guys do, and I want to be a part of it. <laughs> where, where are we? Who are you guys, and what's going on tonight? Uh, well, pretty much we're coming to you live from Millbury, Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> the Goronsky um, residence. Um, this is my brother, Jake. He's the middle. My brother Luke is the oldest. How you doing? 
Um, I'm the baby. And Dad's coming out with the drinks. <laughs> Dad's coming out. Dad. We bought these tickets almost three months ago. Yeah. Almost three months ago. They called me. They were like, as soon as we found out, as soon as Manny found out they were playing at um, Madison Square Garden, he called me. He was like, they're playing at Madison Square Garden. You're getting tickets. Yeah. We're coming. Yeah. OER has brought us together. <laughs> Especially yeah, Maddie. Closer, closer as a family. Um, we didn't like my cousin Matt. Yeah, we didn't like him too much, and now he's he's a, he's a brother to us. No, I'm a fan. He's cool. How many how many shows have you guys been to? Like, give me a sense of how many um, concerts you guys have been to together. This is my probably going to be my this is my 26 if I counted correctly, and uh, my wife's been to every one of them, but about maybe three or four. Yeah. Our first date was an OAR concert. And this is the next generation next of OAR. Next generation. <laughs> right here. Right. So you got to be playing, they got to play for another 10 years, huh? So you can go see him. This is Jaden Marie. So, uh, Richard, Mark, Jerry, Binge, um, Chris, Mr. Parrish on the keyboard. <laughs> Everybody, you got to keep playing. You got to keep playing. We got young, we got young ones coming up. We're hoping tonight's energy is going to be awesome. You know, off the sailing, you know. Yeah, the energy of New York City alone, just the buzz of the streets. Oh, Even though it's the yeah. home of the Yankees and we're all Red Sox fans. And, <laughs> but um, <laughs> we're, uh, we're going to go into the evil empire and, and live it up. Okay? Okay. I love you. Yeah. Yeah, we got more Here we go. <laughs> Are they all together? Yeah. Yes, no. sir. Well, they're all in my hand. That's together enough. How do you guys feel about giving those tickets to someone else at the concert? What? Because we have eight front row seats together at Madison Square Garden. No, oh, wait a minute! Are you I kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh my God! Front row! <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my God! <laughs> Oh my yeah. God! I never been playing someone that I just told you. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, baby. All together, guys. Eight all front together. row seats. Eight all front row together. seats. Oh my God. Oh, that is so awesome. Let's get drinking. Bye, oh, guys. Bye, guys. Oh my God. It really would have done a win. around 12 We walked along these old these streets Got to know ourselves I like to move She liked to ride She loved to sleep And I love to love all night My friends say I'm crazy And I agree But that's okay That's the way
was holding on to her Like I always do She was holding on to me Like she used to do Back in those days She holding on so No, it's no care Please, that how could I mind? I was unaware She loved to back second You see my friend that say she crazy Shit, I must agree started really in eighth grade when we were like, I don't even know if that's like 1992, but Mark and I had grown up watching uh, Genesis live concerts and then we saw Pearl Jam on Unplugged and that was it. You know, Chris is bar none my best friend in the entire world. Uh, I've known him since I was an infant. Her, his mom and my mom were friends when they were pregnant. I've been to every school, like preschool. Kindergarten, first through sixth, seventh and eighth, high school and college all together. We had one fight because I threw a, a smoke bomb into his house when we were like in eighth grade. He could sing and I played drums because my dad was a drummer. So we put together a band and we found Richard because he was supposedly the best guitar player. He was the coolest guitar player. He approached me and he was like, you know, I heard, I heard you play guitar. I said, yeah, I do. Not very well, but I play guitar. And he said, well, uh, looking to put a band together for the eighth grade talent show. I mean, that might have been the loudest audience that, like, I've heard today, maybe louder than the garden. And so we went to high school together. I had been lifeguarding during the summer, and Benj Gershman was, was a lifeguard and found that he played bass. So it was like, ah, oh, man, come over and jam. And that's when OAR formed. Uh, that was 96. And then the four of us just kind of hit it off. So after that, we decided to record a record. We recorded The Wanderer. Started passing it out during school um, for free. And then everyone wanted one, so we ended up, like, I think we were selling them for, like, $2. And then went to college at Ohio State in 97 for the other guys, and 98 for me. Met Jerry there. Have you ever had an obsessed fan? Um, yeah, we had Jerry, and we <laughs> <laughs> You know, it started out as us just hanging out, and then it went to those guys playing a show uh, down in Columbus, and just tagging along to help set up and 
play at Soundcheck, and which turned into the show, which turned into a couple shows, which turned into a record, which turned into me being a part of the band. In a nutshell, that's the band. It started literally as a couple guys playing in a basement in the neighborhood every day after school, trying to be like, you know, whatever we saw on TV that day. From my house anyway Crawled into my house And he took my cat away Our audience, hands down, is the best. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better group of ladies and gentlemen who will stick by you through thick and thin. Our personalities are what we are on stage, you know? We're, we're just... Very simple, down-to-earth guys. I think that's another reason why it's pretty easy for us to make it feel like we're all in this together and it's not the band's on stage and the crowd's down there. This relationship between the audience and the band one doesn't work without the other, and that's that's just the truth of it. You know, if, if, if we just wanted to be pure artists, we would we'd just be sitting in a basement making music for our own enjoyment. But something always comes from the music. People gravitate to our music because our music comes from like experiences that they can immediately relate to. I just feel like people listen to it because they could they can get within it. Personally, I like the lyrics. Uh, you can relate to them. I like them because they're different. You know, they, uh, they do their own thing and you can relate. I can relate to the songs. The band is great. You know, you can't get enough in the music, but the audience is also really great. Everyone loves the band and is singing along and yelling. And it's just a great feeling when all of that, the music and the audience connect. Best live show I ever see. Like their energy on stage. Mark is one of like the most soulful singers that you'll ever see. Like all their fans know like all of their songs. Everyone gets really into it. Tennessee tonight to see the show. We traveled all the way from Boston, actually. We came all the way from Florida to see them. We've seen them 40 it's times crazy. in the past, all over. I've been to five shows. This is my sixth show. This is my eighth show. Tomorrow night will be 103 for myself. And this will be my eighth show. Yeah. Twelve show. 12. This is our seventh show. We've got a fucking show. Um, this is my first time. Yeah, this is my first time, too. I've been to 152 shows. Tonight, I would love to hear, ooh, that's a good question. Come on, guys. Play is so gone for me. Hey, girl. Right on time. Tragedy and waiting. Night shift. Uh, yeah, that and heard the world. Anyway, anyway is number one. It's poker. crazy even poker. Poker. A lot of memories. Heard the world. Oh, city, on, city on down. Black Rock. Yeah, Black Rock. Every song is my Every favorite song. song. <laughs> We're just getting on the Mass Pike from uh, the Millbury exit onto the Mass Pike. Uh, we have about a three and a half hour drive to New York City, and um, it's, we're all pretty comfortable right now. We may look a little squish, but we're like we're like family. So um, we're sitting on each other, and we're just very excited. We're pumped up. We're front row, baby. We're those people. We are those people.
whether it's Madison Square Garden or whether it's, you know, we're playing a small club somewhere in the middle of the country. Um, we don't like to play the same set list twice. We don't like to play the same versions of the song every time the same way. We're doing two brand new songs. All right, I know initially we said something coming over in the fall. Living in the end, something coming over. This is why. Living in the end is fucking rad. Have we done that yet, Mark? No. It's a big cool place to ask. They always dominated everything that she owned. She didn't stop to see, she didn't have the time. Well, how could she afford to pay attention to life? Now it's all the same for Polly the Bang. If she had to do it over, she would do it the same. How about a song that has new songs? Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, she knew, Old Man Time. For a short solo. Uh, uh, Risen. Risen. Is Risen good? Risen. Risen. Is Risen good? Is but it's got a good song. I really Risen. like that quick. But it's a set. It's a set. Risen. 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 I like to do stops during the Saxo, we try that. Yeah, whatever you want. Whatever you want. So, Risen, Living in the End. Now we need something to bring them back to the show from Living in the End. From the, the when they're at the beer store. Oh, Mr. Black Rock's here. Oh, Mr. Brown. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, this is shaping up nice. Heard the world. Yeah. yeah. I just heard the world is freaking out to bits again and you tell me what am I to do and you just want me to stay here so I'm just gonna stay here at home my last resort Build a castle with an iron door Lock the window, pull the shades Raised out sun won't help anyway If the world is crumbling down Don't wanna be alone, no Locked up in this place Got you seeing on clear Bravery, my neighbor Moved away Cause I don't need to be courageous today If the world is crumbling down I never want to be alone
When you're out on, on that road and, and you've been out for a month or two and it's hot, it's cold, you're sick, you know, things aren't going great. At home, it's getting hard, man, and, and your body hurts, your throat hurts. You know, you really need to take a break. You need to break out and just do something completely insane. It's just kind of like a good time because basically Jerry takes it way too seriously. Jerry pulls all the time, so we're all gunning for him. Shut your mouth. Give me good. Loosen me up there. Hey, this is Jerry DePizzo, and this is Bowling Tips by Jerry. You want to hook it? You got to shake hands with the pin. That's what you got to do. So you start. You got. Well, you just start. <laughs> you got to start, and then you just shake hands with the pin. That's all. Yeah, Jerry. Oh, it looks like you guys. What is it? New school versus old school? Where are the teams? It's just science. Yeah. Ten bucks a hand. Offensively, my strategy is to work the ball straight down the alley towards the pins. And that I'm doing well. But defensively, I don't know if I'm getting into these guys' heads as well as I'd like to. Let's go, Kulos. There it is. There it is, buddy. Oh, robbed. Robbed by the man. You're a fucking robbed asshole. And I'll tell you something else. I gave you a spare. Okay. God. Sorry, man. And he lines up, looking to win. His unique form. You guys, come on, I need to concentrate. Unique form. Best press bowler in 2007. Best press. Yes, best press. Best press. Best Roll the fucking ball. ball. And, oh, it's finger. Oh, oh, my God. And he gets the spare. Oh! weird. I mean, the dynamic in the band is pretty interesting because we've been together for so long, but I mean, we started when we were in high school and now we're, you know, young adults here and, you know, people are getting married and having children and it's just, we're at a completely different stage in our lives than where we were when we started the band. Hey babe, would you like some milk? Oh, I'd love one. Thank you. Can I have a piece? No! <laughs> and we spend more time together than we do with our families, you know, or girlfriends or wives. So it's almost like it's a marriage, kind of. We have to really, like, respect each other and talk about things. <laughs> Come on, Richie. Ah, go on. Richie gets a strike. You're Come back, Jerry. Jerry by one and Jerry will be the lowest. Oh! I guess it is like a marriage. It's it's more than just a business relationship, that's for sure. And it's it's more than just friendship. You know, it's 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 family. It's these guys are my brothers. We got an average of 124. You had an average of 106. 107. 107. So you owe us 170 dollars. It's about the game. It's not about who wins or loses. No, it's not about who wins. It's about enjoyment. It's about being together as a group. No, no, enjoyment was beating you. <laughs> All right, guys, this is... Hey, guys. Jerry and Chris, you guys gotta introduce yourselves, because I'm not so good. Angela. Angela? Yeah. How you doing? Kirsten. Kirsten, how you doing? Hi, Chris. Alex, how's it going? Every single article, interview, newspaper, anything would be frat band, frat rock, college jam band, and, and just... Nothing about those labels was being anything positive. Frat rockers, OAR. I don't even know what frat rock is, you know. I was, I was never in a frat. Who's leading this off? Me. Um, was the frat band in Ohio State the same as it is now? We don't really consider ourselves a frat band, only because we played so many different, you know, events. 
Um, we've played everything from birthday parties to house parties. We played in small bars and large clubs. We've played sweet 16s. All different kinds of parties. It wasn't just frat parties. When I see uh, articles about us with wrong facts, it drives me up the wall. I don't mind getting slammed by somebody uh, writing about us if they're correct. You know, if they're like, hey man, you could be a lot better. That's cool. I'm cool with that. But if someone says, you know, formed in 1999 at Ohio State University, this college frat rock band, blah, 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 blah. Get your facts straight and then rip me up. That's cool. Where did you come up with the name? OAR. When Mark started writing the original music that would become the first OAR material, um, you know, we just, we got really, really excited about it. And it was our own kind of musical revolution. And um, it was just a personal thing. And... Um, so that's, that's where our heads were at. And at that time, a lot of the songs that Mark was writing were, um, were based off of uh, characters and themes from a short story that he was writing. In that short story was a sentence, and in that part of that sentence was of a revolution. And um, we, we took that, we thought it sounded really cool, and it applied to us because of our own musical revolution. What began as just my attempt at writing a short story, then became my attempt at writing songs, and now I'm just trying to do both, you know? And I, I look back at those songs 10 years ago, and yeah, you can pick them apart, but you can't duplicate them. Look, all is going on, and he's I mean, last year we were here for the OAR concert, same exact spot, parking spot right over there. First car in the parking lot. We thought we were lost. Two hours later, there's one hour car to pull in. That's the same question. So we're always early to everything. It's How many hours never. ahead of time are you guys? It's we're about like five. About four or five hours, but it doesn't even matter. It's the dedication to OAR. Yeah. Black Rock! There's a song of ours called Black Rock. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately enough, there's a, there's a street uh, in Maryland called Black Rock Road. And I feel bad for the county because every time we go there, they have to replace the sign because someone steals it. I apologize to the people of Montgomery County. in a neighborhood called Spring Meadows that is right off Black Rock Road. It's kind of like a woods road. It's got a river going through it. They used to go swimming down there. There's an old mill down there. They all have their names signed down there. All there's a, there's a rope swing and everything. Black Rock Road, right. We had to get the sign and for them. And we had to get the sign for them. They signed it last year. We brought and they signed I get it, because, I mean, my friend Chris Partridge used to steal this Partridge Way sign all the time. But I was never too into stealing. Something rubs me wrong about that. But I get it. I appreciate it. <laughs> Just put it back. All day long to Black Rock! Black Rock, I remember writing it with Richard in my parents' living room. We wanted to just be very specific, you know, it's about a place we like to go there. Then the years went on, we went to college, we started touring, we started going to all these places and no longer could we go to this Black Rock. No longer could we go to the places we used to go to. They changed, people had changed, everyone's gone. And so we decided that this place is a state of mind, really. Oh, that's all it is. Everyone has that foundation, that place in the back of their head that when it gets too loud, you can go. And I get like goosebumps talking about it because I literally feel that, you know, out there, alone all the time, like you can be surrounded by all these people, but you're really on your own. So now we keep it in our heads, you know? It's that thing that you attach yourself to to remember where you come from. I just look around and take in that feeling coming out from the ground. That's just something that I'm doing sometimes. Hey, hey, hey. I'm gonna say now when I'm out my door and I pull in the wind up off the shore. And that's just what we're doing tonight. Yeah. From that 
crack rock Swear I spent my time Writing down memories and writing my rhymes Thinking about what's right or wrong Hey, you know, love and memories untitled, hey girl, uh, you know, if only she knew, or Dara Miad, King? King of the Thing, but I'm thinking more of an electric reggae thing. What else do we have? I love Dara Miad, I think it's beautiful, I think it's really pretty. You like that? Yeah, 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 you like it? Okay, so then we got it. Tuesday's coming, my baby. Tell you Wednesday morning. It's not too late for us The bags aren't out the door Molly, Don't you know life is a feeling Without you, it's nothing It's not too late for us The bags aren't out the door Uh, Darmiad is, is, it means is coming in Farsi. So, Sashambe Darmiad means Tuesday is coming. And I, my wife would say, when are you going on tour? And I'd say, you know, Wednesday. You know, we're going on tour Wednesday. And uh, she said, what time? I'd say, 4 a.m. on Wednesday. She said, like, well, okay, you're leaving Tuesday. And I'd be like, no, 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 we got four extra hours. It's Wednesday, you know. And it came from a funny little thing we had with one another where she try to get me to be honest about it and be like, just admit you're leaving and we're not going to hang and that's cool. And I said, you know, I'm going to kind of write a song to her and saying, you know, I may be leaving, you know, Tuesday's coming, it's a Shama Darmian, but at the same time, you know, I'm taking you with me. Um, the second I leave, that road that took me out is the same one that I'm coming back on. And uh, her family's Persian, so um, I thought it would be a nod to her and them. And uh, they love it. They love when we play it. Because <laughs> there's only people in the place who, who know what the hell I'm saying.
and we left Virginia at like um, midnight or one, playing the garden in a bunch of hours, not too many, and I'm supposed to stop at a hotel and drop some of the guys off and then go back to my place downtown. I probably look like hell, but it's gonna be a good day. I'm Jeff Fair 728 on OARfans.com, which is a message board. It's been around for many years, created by uh, Mike Saranowski. We've all, we all stick together. We all know who's going to the shows. We all find out where we're going to meet, what bar to go to before the show. Got a pregame. My name is Mike Saranowski. I'm 27 years old, graduate of The Ohio State University. Well, the, the message board changed my life in a number of ways. Um, one of the main things, of course, is I, is I have my beautiful fiance here that I basically met through the message board. It's our nasty. He's, uh, he's been like one of those guys that's been there from day one. You know, he, he basically set up this whole community uh, just for, from his love of the music. I go on that internet and I, 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 it's like I know these people. I meet them and they say their name and then I say, well, what's your, I'm a Jack Straw 11 or whatever it is. Oh, okay, I know who you are. And then I'll, and then something will click like, hey, wait, why, why'd you say that I was uh, looking pretty shitty that night? The yeah, band cool. participates a lot in the message board, and I think that's one reason that it's extremely successful. They, you it, see them browsing the board, and you hear them talking to the fans about the board, and they know people's board right. names just like we do, which is what makes it really special and what makes it different from a lot of other communities. And he, he single-handedly has helped us spread our, our word, our music across the country. Um, all with those little microphones. I don't know. So Ben, you're good after sound check till eight. You gotta be there at eight. Okay. What are you doing? I'm gonna come home. Yeah. Take a nap and uh, go mm -hmm. back with the same. But we gotta be there by eight. That's the only thing. We are just normal guys doing what we do, just like everybody else out there. And we're not gonna uh, forget who we are and where we come from just because you know we're playing big shows and stuff like that. Like that's just a show. It's not who we are. There it is. Yeah. Turn, there turn, it is. Turn. It's nice when uh, people say you can't do something and then you do it anyway. That's the best the thing. There's not a competition, but there's definitely like an aggravated <laughs> proudness about it. Like, we got to sell it out because we worked hard for it, you know? Hey, what's happening? Doing great. How you doing? Hi. Good to see you again. I remember you. How you doing? Yeah? This young gal has been to, I know, three shows of. This is the third? This is the third. Look at that memory. This little guy comes, she knows all the words. She's always hanging out. Say hi to the camera. Hi. So have a good time. Give me five, all right? I'll see you later. Have fun. Stay warm. Good Thanks to see you, man. Yeah. Great to see you. Third time I saw you, you didn't remember me. I know. <laughs> the garden has always been a pinnacle spot in my eyes to, to come and play. New York City growing up was not far out of reach. I came up here with my family a lot and I can remember coming into Penn Station and coming out and that being sort of like a landmark. Here's my brother, man. So yeah, so yeah, how you doing? Yeah, this is my main man, you gotta understand. <laughs> no, oh, Daddy, I don't come on. Give him Uncle Mark hugs. How are you? You doing okay? Go to that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a very rare occasion where I'm actually able to, to have my daughter with me. And it doesn't happen very often. But when I play, like, uh, I live in Columbus, Ohio, so when I play in Ohio, maybe she'll come out. But, like, this is really probably the first big trip she's made. Yay! You're bouncing for the cameras. You're being a hand bone. Yay, oh, yay. Hand bone. Look at the carrot. Yeah, Jake, this song's for you. 
U.S. Navy. I'm stationed in Port Wainimi, California. I'm a CV and we're getting ready to head to Iraq in a couple months. Well, the song I listen to the most when I'm on deployment is I Feel Home. That's just one song that always makes me just come back, makes me think of where I was that day or what I did that day and then I listen to it when I come back here and I can think about when I listen to it so I could come back here in my mind. We've got nothing to do, but when I look at you, I see someone I know and I... It's hard, because I want to be a good family man at home, but you just can't. It's a lot to ask of somebody. It's a lot for my wife, for example. It's a lot to ask of her for me to be gone for 200 and some days a year. I'm not there for birthdays and, and anniversaries, and I'm not there to take out the trash. I'm not there to cut the grass, those kinds of things. After a thousand tears, I will find my original. Crew. To me, I could not be at MSG last year. I was on deployment at that time. And I was really upset. I tried to get a plane ticket last minute and just wasn't financially capable to do. So I just made sure I came this year. Had to get here. It took a lot to get here, but I made it. And that's just what I feel. Something real. Oh, sir. Hey guys, I think we're here. Hello. This morning, feeling the same way I do every morning. All I want to do is play music. It's my last show for a while, and it just so happens to be the car. And you can't really compare to anything. Right? You can't. But at its base, at its core, all it really is is just waking up and doing what you love to do. Hello. There's something mystical about today. There's just something in the air. Something, it's a stress, but it's a good stress. There's a, a vibe out there that I feel like it's just like, this is meant to be my Saturday night, my January 27th, and I'd rather be nowhere else in the world. Minutes. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Gentlemen, we've worked, I think, pretty much our whole career to be here, so this is just stage one, but this is a house of rock tonight, okay? A house of rock. This is a garden, baby. A garden. All right, thank you, great. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. Bobby the band's walking. Right before we walk out on stage, it's usually always my favorite part of the night. When you're getting closer and closer and you hear the, cl the, the crowd roaring louder and louder, you know, that's when I kind of get the chills. You know, it's, it's not a nervousness, it's more of a, a here we go. You know, this is, this is it, this is the moment. That's actually like my favorite part of the night. After the huddle, uh, you're, you're usually wearing your wireless pack and you're walking to the stage and you're usually far enough away that your wireless pack isn't getting enough sound so, or the signal's not there. So you, as you get closer, you'll start to get these like signals of the crowd noise, like them screaming. What are we ending the entire night on? I think it's poker. Yeah, either of those two. I agree with I would say end the set with 52 with poker. That's cool. I like that. We ended the entire show last time with poker. I have no idea why poker became what it has. If I could bottle it up and do it again, I'd do it again. You know, the tune has two lies, it has two parts, you know. When I was in Maryland, it had, you know, the, you know, the real fast, you know. And what it was supposed to represent was the fast-paced kind of lifestyle I was trying to live. I was trying to smoke as much weed as I could, drink as much shit as I could, do whatever I could to make myself feel good. And then I went to Israel, and I realized how small my life really was. And... Everything slowed down. For game two, but to do my wallet skin thin, and I just lost my watch last night. Well, I've got a problem, so I gotta put all down. Hey. That was a crazy. Crazy game of poker is a game of cards with the devil, and you're flying through, you're losing everything as you're going through. And then the second half is a declaration that I'm not gonna lose. I'm not gonna get you're not gonna get all my stuff. And that was that was a changing point in my life. It reflected in the song, it went out on the internet, kids loved it, we played it at shows. I mean we were playing it, I remember in high school, playing this song at a little bar, and people love this song. I mean it's just never I don't know what it translates, but to this day, we love playing it. I think that may be what keeps it alive, is that we're not playing a hit song that we don't like to play. We're playing a really long song that we love to play, and it just so happens other people like it. So I asked Johnny what you're doing, and...
Sacrifice for me But I asked And you were born And like the wind You snuck up on me You got me begging for your storm Oh, 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 Fifty more days till I might come back for more. Gonna lock you up and love you down. Can't take this anymore. The nights are old, but I am young. Cross the sea, writing letters home. Answer me, let me hear your voice. Can't take this anymore. But I, no. I think there's songs thematically that, like, story-wise, tell more of a cooler ending. And with the with the set list, I think it might be something to think about for how we end the show in that regard with the with the encore. It's also the end of the tour. Uh, just, just another point about it. Yeah, let's. I say we end with Superman. Dum 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 d
Did you have a good time? I know we did. <laughs> Thank you guys. Happy New Year. Great job. Thanks, Ari. Sorry I fucked up ripping in the end, guys, but you know what? Shit happened. Good talk, man. That's the way to do it, fellas. Can't just come in and play, man. It's good, guy. You gotta come in and fucking rock the garden. Rock the garden! Rock the garden tonight. The best show I've been there. Definitely beats out all the others. They've grown up. That didn't even touch my seat. I don't even know what seat I was supposed to be in. Oh! 
Close to a bench, you guys. It's just nice. Oh it was a raise, a crazy night. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I believe I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going home. You know, guys like Jeff are really humble about things like that. And, and what they're doing carries a lot of weight and a lot of responsibility and uh, a lot of courage. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you, not only for coming to the show, but for going off and, and fighting overseas for us as well. Most of the time, when you just start ripping shit off, I mean, you making that up yourself. That's, okay. that is, that's what I always thought. It, it is absolutely amazing. You have no idea how. You, honestly, you like the words you say is like so freaking cool. How you just rip that shit off. We live our lives through it. Seriously, we just feel like from where you It's awesome. I just feel like um, okay. So I'm, like even now we're recording tonight. I fucked up some things, whatever. But right now, if I was to sit and write it, we wouldn't be spontaneous. Right. It'd be written. Yeah. It's not the way cool. you're thinking. But you take the chance. You say you get out there and you make it up on the spot. It could be horrible. You could have nights where you make no sense. Sorry, I've never seen it horrible. Ah, oh, get out of here. Get out of here. You push it. We got it. Two, three. I think anyone in the band can agree that after 10 years of, of playing, gosh, so many different shows and going through so many different experiences, and most of them great, but some of them really, really tough, you know, being able to feel like we've accomplished something as big as selling out Madison Square Garden, you know, I mean, that's a dream come true. Selling out Madison Square Garden is a validation. It's like you're doing something right, you know. On a personal level, it's saying to my kid one day, you know, I swear I was cool. Uh, <laughs> I might not be cool now dropping you off at school, but, I, you know, look at this picture. I, that was me. You know? We've always believed that, you know, you never have to do one big thing. You have to do a million little things, and you have to keep doing them to continue being who you are. You know, it's great playing Madison Square Garden. I really enjoyed it. It's exceeded any kind of expectation that we've ever had. But I don't want to, I don't like to rest on it. Let's move on. Let's, let's do the next thing. You know, we've been a band for 10 years. And that's a lot longer than um, any other band that I personally know. And it would be nice to, to hear someone write something that, that acknowledges the fact that, you know, we're not the biggest stars, you know, on the planet, you know, we didn't just rock it to, to stardom. Um, that we've always just kind of gradually um, grown. I just want to say that I wouldn't rather be doing anything else. You know, these are my best friends, the crew, they're my best pals, and I love them all. This wind has got me cold and I'm so damn tired of losing my friends Every single time I go and lose my hands I say, but that's okay, I'm on my way I don't wanna be here, but maybe I'll end up that way And in a while, when I realize there's something new
train in a dash Running hard from a past Set to ride this here rail till the end Along the way met a queen Now I'm a king And we reign our kingdom from a mountaintop 